Yoshihiro Hattori was a 16-year-old from Japan who was staying in Baton Rouge, Louisiana through the American Field Service Student Exchange Program. Around 8.30 p.m. on October 17, 1992, Hattori and his homestay brother, 16-year-old Webb Haymaker, were heading to a Halloween party for Japanese exchange students when they arrived at the wrong house due to two numbers being switched on the address they were given. The quiet suburban home actually belonged to the Pierce family, who lived six houses down from the house with the party. Hattori was dressed as John Travolta from Saturday Night Fever, and Haymaker had a neck brace and bandages that were not part of a costume, but from an injury he sustained. The two boys rang the front doorbell, and then began their way back towards the street when nobody answered. Inside the home, Bonnie Pierce heard the doorbell and used the carport door on the side of their house to see who was outside. Accompanied by one of her three children, Miss Pierce opened the door to find two young men outside and claimed she was startled after they began approaching her at a fast pace. She quickly slammed the door and yelled for her husband to get his gun. Outside, the two teens were leaving the property when they noticed Bonnie Pierce peeking out the side door. Webb Haymaker claims he told Miss Pierce, we're here for the party, before she slammed the door. Afterwards, the two boys continued walking towards the street. Inside the house, 30-year-old Rodney Pierce was watching television and talking to his father on the phone when he heard his wife shouting for him to get his gun. Rodney Pierce did not ask questions or give any hesitation. Instead, he went to their bedroom and retrieved a 44 Magnum handgun from his closet. Mr. Pierce then stepped just outside the carport door entrance. By then, Hittori and Haymaker had made it to the sidewalk when they noticed someone come out of the carport door. Hattori began approaching Mr. Pierce and announcing that they were there for the party. However, Hattori's English was not the best, so it could be hard to understand him at times. Rodney Pierce claims he saw a young male walking around his truck and moving towards him in an aggressive manner, so he raised his magnum and told the teen to freeze. Haymaker saw the gun and shouted for Hattori to stop, but for reasons unknown, Hattori kept approaching Mr. Pierce. Rodney Pierce heard Hattori saying something, but couldn't understand what it was. He then mistook a camera Hattori was holding in his hand as a gun or other weapon. From five feet away, Mr. Pierce shot Hattori on the left side of his chest before running back inside and slamming the door behind him. The bullet had pierced the upper and lower lobes of Hattori's left lung and exited around his ribcage. Haymaker and a neighbor did their best to resuscitate the 16-year-old exchange student but Yoshihiro Hattori died from blood loss just minutes later. As one of the neighbors was calling for help, Bonnie Pierce could be heard saying, Go away, as the Pierce family huddled together in their kitchen, waiting for police to arrive. Pierce was charged with manslaughter, and if convicted, faced a maximum of 40 years in prison. His lawyers argued that he was justified in shooting Hattori because he feared for his family's safety. Under Louisiana's Shoot the Burglar law, a person is allowed to use deadly force to protect his home from an intruder. Prosecutors argued that Pierce used excessive force and could have avoided the deadly confrontation by staying inside or stepping back inside his home. They argued that Hattori and Haymaker made no sign of a threat after ringing the doorbell and announcing they were there for a party. However, testimonies revealed that Hattori would often quickly approach people while waving his arms as he went to greet them. This was thought to be a result of his lack of communication in English. Rodney Pierce testified, I wanted him to stop. He didn't. He kept coming. The next thing I remember, I was scared to death. This person was not going to stop. This person was going to do harm to me. Hattori's father said that his son had lost one of his contacts during the trip, and that may have been the reason he didn't stop as Pierce pointed a gun at him. Webb Haymaker told the jury that Yoshi had waved his arms at Pierce and that, in the darkness, his camera could have looked like a gun. At the end of the seven-day trial, it only took the jury three hours to reach a verdict of not guilty. After Pierce was acquitted of all charges, the decision sparked many debates about gun laws in both the United States and Japan. Later, the Hattori family won a civil court case against Rodney Pierce and were awarded $650,000 in damages. However, only $100,000 has been paid to the Hattori family due to Pierce's insurance company's policy to make a maximum payout of $100,000. The Hattoris used the money to establish two charitable funds in their son's name. 
one to fund U.S. high school students wishing to visit Japan, and one to fund organizations that lobby for gun control. Nearly 1 million Americans and 1.7 million Japanese signed a petition urging stronger gun controls in the U.S. The petition was presented to Ambassador Walter Mondale on November 22, 1993, who delivered it to President Bill Clinton. On December 3, 1993, the Brady Bill was passed, which required a five-day waiting period and federal background checks on anyone purchasing a gun in the United States.